Hi everyone, this is Jeff from PhotoWalk Pro, and today I just want to show you one of my favorite new tools in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 2.0. Uh, this was also actually just introduced in Photoshop CS4 inside of Camera Raw 5. But for those of you who own uh, Lightroom 2, you don't have to go out and get CS4 if you don't want to because you've got this tool available to you right within Lightroom. And that tool is actually the adjustment brush. So what I did was this image right here was was uh, enhanced using the adjustment brush with some great dodging and burning. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reset this uh, and I've created a virtual copy. I'm going to move to that one. This is what that image started as and you can see there's a, a great difference between the two and the whole idea was I really wanted to um, to emphasize the girl with the chainsaw working on this uh, this carving right here that she was doing and you can see I've got a lot of people in the background here and so she kind of gets lost in the confusion and everything. Unfortunately where I was and the lens I had and everything else didn't really allow for that plus it was a really bright sunny day so the whole idea is to put some emphasis on her and take it off of the surrounding areas so really real quick I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple of minor adjustments uh, using uh, the basic panel just to kind of bring down the exposure a little bit um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my blacks up just a little bit now you can see here my histogram warning says I've already got some blacks in here but that's okay because if I click on it you can't really see them yet. There's some really deep shadow areas where it's saying, hey, you've got too much black, but I don't really care about those. What I care about are the blacks in the areas of interest. And as you can see, I slide that up and it, the blacks start going crazy. But I'm going to take that down. I just want to basically uh, really reset my black point to an area that I think is just right for this image. Let me turn that warning off up there. Okay, uh, so I've got pretty much the exposure set for her that I want, uh, but I still have this area up here that is really light and very much distracting from the final image. So what I'm gonna do is two things. One is I'm gonna crop in and kind of take this image down and make her the focal point, uh, which is what I would have liked to have done in camera. I just didn't have the right lens at the time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and crop in and that's pretty good right there. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate her out from that background by doing what they used to do in the darkroom called burning. Um, you could do it in Photoshop, uh, but they've got a great tool to do that now, and that's this adjustment brush. So I'm going to click on the adjustment brush, and that's located right up here in your panel. Uh, just click on it once, and when you do that, you're automatically going to create a new uh, adjustment brush. Um, and you can actually have multiple adjustment brush actions going on. Uh, the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. You can see you've got different things you can use the brush for. I'm going to choose exposure, and I'm going to actually set my amount down by, let's say... Uh, you know what, I'm going to drag this down to one stop just to start with. And as you can see on here, let me put this on a dark, dark area here. This brush right here um, allows you to paint. That inner circle with the crosshair is the painting area, but then that outer circle is how it, it feathers. And it will actually feather that effect out until it fades to nothing around that circle. Now you can actually control that. If you hold down the shift and you hit your left bracket key, you get less feather. If you hold your just keep hitting your right bracket key, you get more feather. So uh, you can also, when you let go of the shift key, you can increase the size of that brush and you can decrease the size of that brush. So that's what uh, the controls are for that. Now down here is a really cool thing. and I'm gonna zoom in one more time for you. Right here is the area called Auto Mask. Now what Auto Mask does is it actually, um, actually, you know what, let me, uh, let me show you what it does without the Auto Mask. As you're starting to paint in here with this adjustment brush, it'll actually add what's a kind of a mask. If I hold over this point right here, you can see there's the mask right here. This, this kind of red area shows you the mask. Now that mask will go everywhere you paint, but if you turn on this auto mask area right here, what happens is, and actually, you know what, let me, let me show you right here. I'm going to paint over in this area by her arm, and if I run over that spot again, it'll show you that it actually bleeds into her arm a little bit. Now let me go ahead and undo that one and turn this auto mask on. And now what happens is the auto mask will actually see that contour, those contrast lines where her arm meets the background, and it will hold that masking from entering into that space. It actually masks out that area and allows you to kind of paint freely in here and really start to... Uh, now. In these areas up in here, you can see where I'm getting this kind of funky lines. Turn the auto mask off because it's trying to mask and not hit those lines right there. But you can do this up here. 
And wherever you actually have areas of great contrast, go back. So I'm going to just roughly paint, but you want to go back and hit those with that auto mask turned on, and that will allow you to bring that that painting right up to the edge. And I'm going to go ahead and increase my brush size here a little bit and just fill in these larger areas and then because I can get those done really quickly and then I can turn that auto mask on and really start to work these areas and get right around the edges and really start to make this work. Now another thing I can do is if that's not dark enough for me at the time I can actually take my exposure and lower it down a little bit so I can really see what I'm starting to paint here. Okay, I'm going to take it all the way down because it's too much, but it gives you an idea of exactly where you've painted. All right, let me turn that auto mask on. I'm going to make my brush size a little smaller, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit just so you can see how when I'm painting right here, that auto mask will take it right up to the edge, but it's not going to go inside. So I can do this really quickly and go right around the edges there, and you can see I get right up into that edge there, and it's not bleeding into that area. This is just so amazing, and it is such a time saver. Um, it works better with areas of high contrast, um, but I'm telling you what, this thing is truly an amazing thing. So let me zoom back out and just do this real quickly around through here. And I'm just going to try to get this done as quick as I can and hit these areas around here. And you see, wherever I have those contrast lines, it's kind of holding it out. Now, I did get the hat there, but you know, I can go back and fix that um, because there's also a subtraction tool in here. So if I've got anything that's too dark, and you can see when I hit over this you'll see the mask pop up again. But there's my mask. Now you see I went into her hat a little bit. Um, all I can do is hit this uh, this plus button right here or I can actually just hold down the alt key and you'll see I get a minus inside there. So I can actually just undo or paint out that area that I put too much into. Just like that. Alright, and maybe down into the brim of her hat just a little bit like that. Alright, now like I said that's a little too much so now I can go back and I can take that exposure and pull it back up to somewhere that looks a little bit better. Like right about, well, let's, well, let's go right about, let's see, what do you think? Right about there. Um, so now I've got her separated out. You can see it's a very clean, um, very clean masking job. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here so you can see. You don't get any uh, bleed over from that, from that dodging and burning. And it's just a really fantastic way to um, to do some dodging and burning. Wow, that was a real psychedelic thing going on there. Um, real great way of doing some dodging and burning. The last thing I would probably do is, you know, maybe play with my tone curve a little bit just to um, get a little bit more contrast in there for her. And then I don't know, maybe just well, you got to go in and you got to do some sharpening because sharpening's a requirement. Um, do a little sharpening. Do a little masking here so that. Uh, I hold down the Alt key and pull it back so I'm not applying any sharpening to her skin um, because it should be smooth, but those sh sharpness areas, I really want to get those to pop. And you can actually toggle that on and off just so you can see the effect. All right, and so there you have it. That's uh, a little bit of the adjustment brush. It goes so much deeper. You can do so many other things with it. You can control um, local area contrast, you can control sharpness, uh, saturation, clarity, um, you can soften, it ha actually has a soften skin feature, so if you're doing a, a portrait retouch, you can go in and use that brush just on the skin, it'll soften the skin, but leave the rest of the image, you know, nice and crispy sharp. It's a fantastic tool, if you haven't played around with it yet, you gotta check it out. Uh, my name is Jeff, and I'm from Photo Walk Pro. Have a great day.